I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago. Hey everybody, welcome to my channel and welcome to my home. Adventure of the Bus. She's got some new new digs on her and I am I'm making good progress and this is my new entryway into my home of Adventura. I have a pocket door that is basically a floating door and uh, this episode is where you get to see this dream become a reality. You know when we have uh, times in our lives that things get tough in our life sometimes Things don't always go our way, and they don't, uh, they don't seem like they're going to come true, and that we have dreams that we want to see become a reality. And um, in this episode, you see my dream of having this pocket door become a reality. And uh, I have many other ideas for things on this bus that are coming up as I, as I work on it. And it seems like he's giving me parts from the doors into the doors to the new door, and then the the front cab area and I've got this uh, working on it and you're kind of getting some sneak peeks of what's to come but uh, I'm really happy with all the progress I've made and there's some new ideas that I have for in, inside which we're gonna start working on that soon um, the next step is to go in after I finish the ceiling in here I'm gonna work on the ceiling in there and uh, we're making good progress I have to wait until I get paid next so that I can get some more supplies and um, but things are going well and I'm feeling encouraged with the progress I've made so um, thank you for stopping by and I hope you enjoy this chapter uh, when dream her her dreams become reality um, and this is one of them the door and uh, I have uh, you get to see more detail of it in the episode and I just want to tell you to enjoy the episode day starts with a good cleaning and that's exactly what I'm doing here and um, why am I cleaning well behind all that stuff there is what the project for today is going to be I have a concept about a door that I wanted to do um, when I remembered that when my da daughter called me and reminded me that I had a door at her house I was like oh man that would be perfect for my wall between the bus and the and the and the door I had an idea to have a pocket door anyway and when I built that wall it was a perfect setup for me to have to be able to um, have a pocket door and where I decided to put the wall was a perfect spacing to where I could put the door on the outside of the wall toward the cab and then I didn't have to worry about where the pocket door would go. I, when I looked at it, it was like the perfect space to be able to fit that pocket door in the way it was indented in the in the bus. And so I decided that I was going to... I got these drawer, drawer poles at Lowe's for about 30 bucks each. And, and um, or for 30 bucks for the set. And they were 75 pound drawer poles so they can hold up to 75 pounds well this door doesn't even weigh maybe 10 pounds and maybe 15 max 20 okay with the glass in it and um i thought this would be perfect for my pocket door and i kind of like the fact that it's it's got some privacy because it's got the the um tinting on it or the the kind of window um it looks kind of like paper on there the the oriental paper look but it's got that that and you can see that both the dot bottom and the top have pretty big pieces on it so what i do is take it outside i mark it up and i actually cut it and that's what you're going to see here is the the cutting process i marked it up i line up my saw i go get the power and this one i did with the craig jig jig because i was cutting off a bigger piece so i could do it and the craig jig works good for that this was one of the things I found that the Craig jig worked really nice for, but then on the shorter side, I had to use the clamps with my, my kind of um, saw guide. And so that was really what I had to do on the short side. Um, but when you have the longer side, you have more space for that Craig jig that you can work really good. And so I cut it down to size or what I felt was, I, I cut it a little long because I don't want to cut it too short. You know, you can always take something away, but it's hard to add to it later so I decided that I was going to go ahead and cut that 
bigger at first and then trim it down as I needed it. And so this is the first fitting here. I'm trying it in the space to see how it fits. And you can see it's kind of nudging against the top of the wall. And I know it needs to come down more. And I, I will talk about that more later. But I take it back outside, take a little bit more off, and then it fits a lot better now. And it's got a smoother, and I did a little celebration because I was happy that it was starting to come together. And now uh, what you're going to see me doing is start working on the wall and reinforcing the wall so that I can um, hang the hinges. I had to kind of take the wall apart and redo it a little bit so that I could do it properly. And so that's the process you're watching now is me um, redoing the, the mounts for the wall and hanging it better so that it's more stable and, and um, not flimsy and has all the support it needs so that it can bear the weight of the door and the hinges or the drawer pulls. I keep wanting to call them hinges, but uh, I just take the time to do a little bit of extra work and take apart what I've done. And I, like, like I've said before, a, a mistake is an opportunity to learn how to do something different. So um, it's not that I really made a mistake. It's just I found that uh, there was a little bit more needed to be able to provide the support that this door needed and to provide places for the um, drawer pulls to be screwed into because if I just left it with the framing that I had, it wasn't going to have that. So these are kind of like, what do they call them? Uh, um, braces, deadheads. Uh, I think they, they, they have many different terms for them, but um, I'm just putting in some extra braces and just reinforcing that wall so that I had those places to screw into. And that's part of why I did that. So why am I putting a wall between the cab and the main part of the bus? Well, the main reason is because when I'm driving the bus, I have an air conditioning in the front of the bus that is really suited to only air condition the front part of the bus. Uh, when this was a commuter bus, it had a secondary air conditioning unit in the back that air conditioned it for the passengers. And since I'm not going to have a lot of passengers in the bus when I'm driving, um, I'm going to not need to air condition that space back there. So I wanted a wall to separate between the cab and the bus, so that the, the living space, so that I could not air condition that whole space when I'm driving. And when I'm parked, I don't want to air condition the front part of the cab when I'm living in the main space. So this is more, uh, is kind of a twofold purpose. One, so that I can have a little bit of insulation. Two, or actually I'm going to just give all the reasons. Okay, one, so I can have some more insulation between the cab and the bus. Not have to air condition places I don't want to air condition. Two, because uh, it's added security. And three, privacy, extra privacy, because I have a wall. Now I don't have to have a bunch of curtains around the front of the window, which is not always pretty. And I can have that wall for privacy. And so therefore I have a little separation between me and the actual cab of the bus. And um, I have some other things in plans for the front of the bus later. And you can kind of see a little bit of sneak preview behind there, behind what I'm working on. This is kind of, I was working between two projects here and I decided that the, the wall was going to be the priority in this particular video. So I was actually working on the wall and um, next week's video, you'll get to see more of what I've done in the front of the cab. And um, I'll be sharing that more in the next couple of episodes coming up. Um, the first one is going to be building in, uh, this one's for building in the door and the, and the wall space and then uh, finishing that up and um, not finishing as far as putting all the walls on, but this is going to be, you know, all the coverings for the walls, but this is going to be like a majority of the straight uh, structure and framing, structure and framing in this one. And that gets that completed. I'm putting in a header here, which I really didn't need. I thought I needed it, but it doesn't hurt to have it. And what I was saying before too is I'm five foot six, five seven, and that is about six foot high on that header. So um, people who are over six foot, you're gonna have to duck to get inside. But it is 
still pretty good clearance in the bus because I still have a good foot over my head to to walk around inside that bus so um, I'm not lacking space to get in and out might have to duck a little bit coming in but that's all you have to do so at tall people you're gonna have to just duck a little bit or I'll take the header out and put a different piece in and reinforce that but that means I have to take everything apart and put it back together and right now I don't think I want to do that or I'll just cut a piece out and, and make it higher whatever I'll figure it out because I, I don't mind modifying things if I need to so if by some chance the good Lord brings a man in my life and he's taller than me and he needs to have that fixed I'll I'll make that adjustment in that time <laughs> it's not that hard to make because you notice I put everything together with screws so I did have a little forethought with that so I, I did put things together with screws so that I could easily take things apart and put them back together if I had to do any maintenance on the bus and there you see me um, uh, putting in some uh, anchors to anchor that into the top uh, metal frame of the bus because I don't want that wall to move I want it to be good and stable and so that's what I did I made it good and stable it is it is anchored in on the bottom and anchored in on the top and it's not going to go anywhere and that's where you say built zin tough because if it's just built it's not built zin tough but if it is zin tough then that's it's built well and it will last for a long time because we we have some German blood in us and we're engineers by heart and so we work hard at bu building things tough and that they're built to last and stick around for a long time and so that's like a phrase I forgot we used to use a lot and my son reminded me that and at Christmas time when our when in our last episode uh, or actually in the episode before the last episode in chapter 23 when he came here and he helped me build that little mount for the projector um, it was really cool because um, he used that phrase and I was like man that's a phrase I need to use because that is exactly what I'm doing in this whole process is I'm building everything Zen tough and um, it's gonna look amazing when I'm done I'm, I'm really I'm seeing little glimpses of the future and that's part of what I'm talking about in the title of this episode is that her dreams are becoming a reality because literally I'm getting to live my dream of building a tiny home and both living my dream of building a tiny home but also living the dream of, of um, having an RV and not just an RV but one that's custom made for me and uh, it's cool because I've got some really good ideas that I've been getting and I'm keeping these pictures in my brain because I'm going to take those ideas that I'm getting and I'm going to make them a reality in this bus and I have a really cool idea for this particular wall and I'm hoping to incorporate that, incorporate that. and um, I might have to ask my friend Sevgi to give me some advice on it because um, there's some good um, things that I need to do um, art artistically wise uh, there's some things I want to do in the bus and this particular wall is kind of probably going to be my centerpiece and uh, on this side it'll be kind of a canvas and I'm gonna I've got a, a really cool idea and concept for it and Sevki is a beautiful m mural painter but I think I can see how I can do it in my brain right now I just gotta execute it so I'm gonna have fun with that and see if we can get that to happen but uh, that's for the future but uh, in this meantime I have a little dead space here that I didn't plan to have I tried to edit out all the dead space but I didn't get that done uh, on all of it but here you can see I actually have it mounted now and it actually opens and closes as I wanted it to and um, it fits in that little pocket space nice and now when I want to build something in front of it uh, in the in the inside part I have all the space I need to build in right in front of those doors I have a whole concept for this whole like bench there and then kind of like a little um, fold-out table that's going to be right there uh, to be able to have meals right there in front of that that wall um, but also in front of the doors so that you can open the doors out and see the beautiful places I'm going to be able to go and um, also um, I'm going to be building out a couch on this side closest to you 
uh, or closest to the, the driver's side will be a couch set up and um, I'm going to kind of right now I have a concept for a actual L-shaped couch to go there and um, it's really a cool concept and I think I, I, I've got it really pictured in my brain now so soon that will become a reality because I'm going to be starting to build out that stuff in the next few weeks um, I'm going to start building out um, cabinets, furniture, um, things like that um, but uh, first before all that happens I have to do the ceiling and uh, do that. I thought I adjusted that so I didn't have that in there. Oh well. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm gonna get on here. This is me. I've actually got it working with all the things put together and I have the wall all reinforced and it's hanging and it's working and I'm gonna give it a little close-up view of how it works and there you go. It's done and it was a very satisfying job. So this has been a hard day of work, fabricating a lot of things, and uh, I am really happy to say I have a payoff now, and that these doors are working. This door is working. I could probably drop it down just a little bit. I might do that. I might just drop the bottom hinge a little bit, and then um, f fix it so that I can better hang the top part, but um, I got it done. It, it's working. <laughs> it's not perfect, but it's working. And if I drop it down just a little bit, maybe a quarter inch, I think I'm going to take it down a quarter inch on the bottom. And then if I take it down a quarter inch on the bottom, I can adjust the top hinge and then we're in good. So there you go. So this is part two of the door build here. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm sealing up the hole where the doorknob used to be on the door so that I can later paint that section and have it covered so that it won't you won't even know that there was a doorknob there and um, I first put a wood filler in that I cut out of the bottom pieces that I had cut off the door and then um, I'm using some wood putty here to fill in the gaps and spaces that are there you'll see me um, sand that later on when I'm cutting the extra pieces off the door because after I just talked about how I wanted to cut a little bit more off the door one I had to take an account that I'm gonna have flooring in the the bottom of the, the cab area and I had to have space for the door to easily go back and forth with with the flooring there and then the other part was um, I just needed a little bit more clearance at the top so I I take it down and I actually trim it out one more time I trim it out and you'll see the process that I used to trim it out here where I actually have the hinge there. I moved the hinge first, remount the hinge in the same spaces that I had the, the holes from previously the way I had it mounted. And then I will mark where I'm going to actually cut off the door because I'm running out of space to be able to cut off. So this is like, this is the ultimate amount that I can take off this door. It, there's really not much more I can take off and so I've got it as tight as I can fit that door and I, you saw me mark my line and now I'm going to take the hinge back off after I had it remounted and I'll actually get my um, guide for my um, circular saw. I'll clamp that down even with the blade. I marked it there just so that it wouldn't move and then I'll get my square and check it and make sure it's square and I'll clamp it down and then we're going to cut it off. And that was a really good process to do it with. Um, not everything always goes that smoothly, but this did. And the last couple projects have gone smoothly. The fans went wonderfully. And now this door project has gone smoothly. There's been some hiccups in the door project, but been really happy with the whole process and watching it come together. And um, I'm gonna have a couple episodes coming up where mom comes around. Um, I think not next week but the week after I'm gonna have another video with mom in there she came down to help me get some cleanup in my area and just help me do some things that I needed to get done just because she likes to come and spend some time with me and work on the bus a little bit so I love having her around and uh, you know 
we need to value the time we have with our parents because we don't know how long we have with them. And, you know, the Lord says that if we honor our parents, that we'll live a long and prosperous life. Not just a long life, but a long and prosperous life. And I've worked really hard at trying to honor my parents in every way that I can. And I count every day I have with them right now as a blessing. And I look for the precious moments every day that I have with them to celebrate them and to celebrate their life. And um, it's kind of like when you're a parent and you have a kid that's growing up and you know you're not going to have a lot of time with them. I always told people that you'll never regret the time you spend with your kids, but you'll always regret the time you didn't. And so I have always made it a, a, a part of my life to make sure I spend what time I can with my kids. I have a grandchild in Dallas, Texas, and I don't get to spend a lot of time with her, but I got to be on the phone with her tonight. Thank God for FaceTime, because we can actually FaceTime. It was her first birthday on February 4th, and so she was in Peru when it was her first birthday, so I got to see her a little bit then, but uh, they just got back from Peru, and um, they called me on the phone tonight, and I got to talk to her, so it was really good. That's part of another reason I'm building this bus. So now you're going to see I have hardware, door hardware on there, covers up some of this old, old spaces, but I have a nice handle on there that matches the exterior handles from the bus. And I have the wall built out and the door looks fantastic. And everything looks super smooth, looks like it's floating, doesn't look like there's anything attached to it, doesn't look like it has a whole bunch of hardware, and it's pretty dang cool. And it's nice to see this dream become a reality. And that's where the hinge, that you can see a, a detail of the hinges. So. so that closes the door on another chapter of Adventure of the Bus. Thank you for coming around. And I believe that as you continue to follow me and Adventura to our uh, dreams, uh, you will begin to see and realize some of the dreams in your life and realize that if it is possible for you to dream dreams and, and make them become reality, if I can do it, you can do it. So I want to ask you to take time to like, subscribe, and share this video with anyone you think that might benefit from it. Uh, I, I took a break and that killed my algorithm, but you know what? I'm doing this more as a video journal of my journey. And if people get to benefit from it, then praise, praise the Lord. I'm happy for it. But uh, I know that when I was in my uh, journey with my husband's cancer, um, one of the things that was the hardest thing to do was to dream in the middle of that, that journey. And I want to tell you, I had to start dreaming. God challenged me to dream in the middle of that journey of his cancer. And I actually did start dreaming again, even though it was hard to do in a very difficult place. But uh, I'm going to tell you, it is possible to dream dreams, and it's impossible to, to see that become a reality in your life. And I actually have a um, t-shirt that says, uh, living the dream that I wear to bed every night now. I, I originally had one that said, uh, dream, believe, do, repeat until I got found this one that said living the dream because that's what I actually get to do. You see this building behind us right here is my studio. This this building right here that we're in is my soon-to-be temporary home. And um, then I have outside, that's the building I get to live in every day over there, the, ca the cabin. So um, God has really planted me in a place where I get to see my dreams be a complete reality and I just want to say thank you for joining me on this journey and once again I say like subscribe and share this with someone you know who might benefit from this this uh, video so thank you uh, for joining me and um, next week we're gonna be seeing some of the things that I've been doing in the front cab which you got kind of a little bit peak of that in the beginning of the episode but uh, we'll see how that turns out next week thanks we thank you all for joining joining me and y'all come back now Thank you all for taking time to stop by. Don't forget to subscribe and share. Y'all come back now. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago.